Do you see something wrong with this elevation drawing? Yes. How in the hell can this building be 60 feet high? It's definitely a mistake. A mistake that can happen to you and to me. Well, to me, not anymore. Because I created an AutoCAD dynamic block that will cover my back. This means not only will I save time by letting AutoCAD calculate my building heights, but also if I ever miss to update any of my elevation tags, AutoCAD will get me covered. Welcome to another episode of AutoCAD Dynamic Blocks. My name is Irving, I'm an architectural designer, certified AutoCAD professional, and the creator of the Lazy Architecture, where every day we help people save their time with tutorials and tools so they can do more in less time. So if you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. So many of you requested it, a AutoCAD dynamic block tutorial from the last uh, Saturday live stream and I listened to. So this video goes like this. First, we're gonna create a elevation height a block you might know it as elevation label elevation marker block and so on so second we're gonna use a field expression combined with a math calculation to make AutoCAD calculate the height of our building automatically and finally I'll show you how to customize AutoCAD so you can have your smart block available to use it in any drawing so let's start drawing a elevation label block. So to start, let's draw a line that is gonna be 15 feet in length. And once we have this line, now let's draw a circle using the C shortcut. And a radius is gonna be nine inches. Once we have that, let's move it from one of the sides over here and let's move it about four inches. Let's draw now one more line that is gonna be two feet, one and a half inch. And let's move it four inches up, like so. So once we have that, Let's now change this line to a center line. Now let's add a hatch using the H shortcut. And let me pick a solid hatch. And let's hatch this area and this other area and click OK. So now a best practice here is to place all of your block objects on layer 0 and color by block. I'll explain you why in a moment. Once we have that, it's time to add a text. So let's use the ATT command and here for the tag would be height from let's say x feet x inches and for the default again x feet x inches justification left make sure block position is checked my textile would be Verdana and for the text height we need to follow the CAD standards so this block can be used for anybody basically so let's go to this chart over here and as you can see the standard scale for the CAD industry it's one eighth of an inch which is 96 as you're seeing it so that means we're going to use a 9 inches high text for this 
uh, elevation marker block so let's use 9 inches here rotation 0 and click OK so we can place it somewhere around here so let's use the same procedure and this time would be a baron of this can be also be a top of because this would be the height of a building for the prompt this will be the, a description and the fall can be top of building again same settings 9 inches for the text and click OK so I'll place it right over here okay so once we have that let's make our block so I'll type the block command the name for our block elevation marker height but again you can name it as you wish so I'll click OK select objects I'll select I won't select the crossing window because then I have problems with the order of the attributes so to avoid this let's select the objects individually so I'll select all of these first then this and then this other attribute now I can press enter and we need to specify a, a base point so click OK and our base point will be over here so this way you can see that once you double click to open or to open the attribute editor or to change your your information the height keeps on the top and the bottom text shows also at the bottom now once we have this block done it's time to go to the second step which is adding a fill expression using a formula to let AutoCAD calculate our building heights for us so let's do it so let's right click on it and choose block editor so now let's add a linear parameter from the block authoring palette over here if you don't see it let me open the ribbon by using the ribbon command and you will see it over here authoring palette so click on it in this case would be the linear parameter so I'll click here here and finally over here so you can see an exclamation mark is showing over here and this basically means that this parameter is missing an action so let's go to the action panel and let's add the stretch action so click on it following the instructions let's select this parameter and the area will the specify the point associated with this action will be over here click and then the area to be stretched will be here to over here finally let's select the objects and press enter as you can see the exclamation mark is still showing because of this side so let's do the same procedure stretch select this parameter specify the insertion point which, which will be over here the area to be stretched over here and the object to be stretched will be over here and press enter so let's quickly test this dynamic block by typing the test b test block command and if we stretch this line you can see that it's stretching accordingly 
as well as this other line so we're doing good so far uh, now like I said if you want to make this block available to any person if this person will mirror this block like so you can see that once you start implementing a text let's say building of top of storefront you can see that your text wouldn't show correctly this is why we need one more parameter in action so let's close the test block editor let's add a point parameter so let's click over here and over here again repeat the same point and let's click over here and over here now let's go to the action panel and let's add the move action let's select this parameter and the object would be this press enter and finally the same procedure using the move select this parameter select the object and press enter so let's quickly test this using the block test command and if we select our dynamic load this time and we say we're gonna mirror this oops um let me undo that and to avoid this let's use the mirror text system variable and let's set it to zero so that way whenever we mirror our text will be still readable so like i said let's change top of storefront and if we have this problem we can easily move it using the move parameter as you can see so we're doing so we're doing good so far let's now go to let me now show you how to insert the field calculation so AutoCAD can calculate the heights of your buildings for you so let's close this and let's get out of the block editor I'll click save changes so we have our block here I'll copy this I'll copy this five feet up so let me see as you can see this is five feet so let's double click over here so let's select this text right click on it and pick insert field now let's go here and pick formula and in the formula area let's right click on it and again insert field let's select object and click this icon over here to select your object in this case would be this block over here this elevation marker block that we just created and from this block what we need is the position property so let's find it over here decimal is correct however make sure not make sure the z and x values are unchecked because we only need the y value so click ok and the math operation would be here minus again right click on it and choose insert field and we're gonna do the same procedure so let's click this icon and this time what we need to select is this other elevation marker block again the same procedure position decimal y value only and click ok now take a look at what happens when we do evaluate we'll have 
this number over here but we need to change to architectural so we can see the correct 5 feet height once we do that click OK and finally OK as you can see you just created this block which will update if you need one more elevation marker block simply copy this let's say five feet up and all you have to do is use the regenerate shortcut and you'll see that your height will update automatically so now let's go to the third step which is how do you have this block available to use it in any of your drones for this let's open the tool palette by typing the control 3 shortcut and I'm gonna create a, a new I'm gonna create a new palette here just for to show you a nice and clean palette and what we need to do is select two of these blocks because remember they work together so I'll select these two blocks and then create a new block the insertion point would be over here so once you have this you can click on it and drag it to your tool palette oops we have a an error here and what happened here is that AutoCAD is not recognizing that your block exists right now so so all you have to do is use the quiz save command to save your drone and now you can now you can now click and drag it to your tool palette so now what you have to do is let me go to this elevation and let's say you want to let's remove all of this for now let's say you want to add these elevation marker heights to this existing elevation and oh oops before let's before let's change the properties and i forgot one step over here and let's change the explode option from no to yes and click ok so now we're ready and for this drawing or any drawing that you need to add elevation heights simply click on it and you will go over here and then finally over here as you can see these are separated now I'll simply move it wherever I need it. Let's say I need it over here. I, I'll then regenerate and you can see that that's the correct high. Remember that you can download this block or any other future block from our Patreon page. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the next one. Just one more thing. If you want more dynamic blocks to save time, check out this playlist that I put together for you.